But is there anything that you would like to say that we didn't mention? I would mention this magnificent tree oh, yes. behind us. Oh. <laughs> How can we forget? We're sitting right in front of it. Italian Wine Travel with Stevie Kim. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Italian Wine Podcast on the road edition. My name is Stevie Kim, and we are once again traveling in the vicinity of Verona. We're not very far. We're actually in a fairly new winery. It's called Costa Arente. And um, we are here today with our special guest, Giovanni Casati. He's the big cheese around here. He's the uh, resident estate manager, but also the winemaker. And he oversees this new group, which is called Le Tenute del Leone Alato. What, what, what's going on? Why is it called Le Tenute Leone? Flying, not flying pigs, flying lions. <laughs> Why is it called that? Uh, because the, the history is that uh, our property mm -hmm. is uh, from uh, General Insurance, that is from Venice. Right. And uh, Leone Alato is the symbol of Venice. Giovanni, tell us a little bit about yourself, Giovanni, who you are. Uh, when, when you started working here, but generally, how long have you been in the wine business? I'm studied in uh, agriculture, agronomist, I'm agronomist and mm -hmm. enologist, and I started my experience in the world of the wine in Tuscany with uh, 13 years of experience uh, through the Montepulciano, Montalcino, Morema and Chianti. And I start me, my new life, uh, and uh, really the new life uh, here in Verona, with uh, this challenge, um, because um, Le Tenute del Leonalato bought the, this estate in uh, 2015. But we rebuilt completely, mm -hmm. in particular the hospitality and uh, in particular the cellar. And uh, we start um, the, the, our first production, entirely made in uh, Costa Rente in uh, 2018. We have uh, uh, 4040 hectares of uh, estate mm -hmm. and uh, 17 hectares of uh, vineyards. Mm -hmm. The system training is uh, for 70% pergola veronese, the historic and typical uh, system training. And uh, we have uh, the varieties typical for Verona, Corvina, Corvinone, Rondinella, and uh, another native uh, variety called Spigamonti. Uh, we are at 200 uh, meters of altitude and uh, the, the climate is very windy and dry. We produce uh, the classical products of uh, Valpolicella like Amarone, Amarone Reserva, Ricciotto, Ripasso and Valpolicella Superiore. And the new one, the newborn, is uh, Molinara, that is uh, the past, it was the fourth uh, variety in the Amarone blend, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, thinking about uh, sparkling wine, rosé and uh, Charmant method, long, six months okay. uh, on the lease. Yeah. Let's taste this Valpantena yeah. Superiore. Yes. The blend uh, is 60% uh, Corvina, 30% Corvinone, 10% uh, Rondinella. In particular, the first step is the color. You mm -hmm. say it's a very good color because uh, it's a very red ruby color, but not deep. It's possible when explain uh, to the consumer, to the guest, uh, how to uh, understand uh, the Valpolicella style, that it's possible uh, to view the finger through the glass. Because uh, the, the, vari the variety typical of Verona have not color, mm -hmm. only rondinella. We start the fermentation in the steel tank, mm -hmm. and one part, uh, in uh, the amphoras mm -hmm. and uh, the other part, little one in Newbury. 2018 Amarone della Valpolicella. Do you have just one type of Amarone? Yeah, only one and uh, we produce uh, the Reserva too. Okay, and uh, this is the current release? Yeah. This is what it's available in the market. How yeah. many bottles? Near uh, 30,000. It's uh, the first Amarone produced completely mm -hmm in uh, the Costa Rente, uh, the, the grapes are dried in uh, the new fruttaio 
and uh, is the blend of 60% uh, Corvina, 30% Corvinone and 10% Rondinella. It ages uh, for two years in the tonneau, 500 liters, and one year more in the bigger wood, mm -hmm. and one year in the bottle. And uh, so uh, when uh, the Amarone is a very good Amarone, mm -hmm. you can live in the glass, uh, and uh, it changed completely the flavor mm -hmm. and uh, probably you start smelling uh, a cherry ripe cherry mm -hmm. and uh, after some hour you can smell uh, coffee torrefaction mm -hmm. and uh, figs um, what are the biggest challenges that you face as a winemaker at costa rente <laughs> it's a good question uh, is it to continue to produce uh, quality wine because uh, we have uh, a big challenge is uh, global warming mm -hmm. and uh, every vintage is uh, really difficult to understand, uh, to interpret it. We have a very big biodiversity in the, in the state, uh, so the bigger part of the state is the wood. Uh, we have uh, animal everywhere and uh, to produce uh, the product uh, a modern, in modern style, but uh, looking uh, in the past. And right now I'm here with Antonella Imborgia. Perfect. Okay. Ciao Antonella. Ciao Stevie. What are we drinking? Uh, we are drinking a Molinara sparkling wine, or a Molinara Rosé. It's actually one of the examples of how Costa Rente wants to innovate, okay. but looking back to the tradition as well. Uh, I was intrigued by the project, which is very dynamic and interesting. And um, because uh, Le Tenuto del Lonelato is a new entity, mm -hmm. let's say like this. It was the previous Gen Agricola. Um, so they've already had uh, some wine estates around Italy. But uh, with the entrance of the new CEO, mm -hmm. there was um, a renovated interest in the, in the wine bit. Uh, so uh, he decided to create this new wine unit uh, with a new team, hiring people from the wine industry, mm -hmm. uh, like the commercial director, myself, uh, Giovanni. So there was a, a, a renovation going on. And it was super interesting from a marketing point of view to rebuild these brands and to uh, acquire new ones. How are you going to position this Costa Rente, their wines, amongst so many different wines? But we are trying not to compete too much between each other, but to try to build a system mm -hmm. and to communicate firstly the territory, the Valpantena, mm -hmm. Uh, to position our products in that sense. Uh, Valpantena means a specific style of wines made of freshness and they are more easy to drink, which doesn't mean uh, they are like simple wines. They can be very structured and complex, but at the same time more approachable. And this is very interesting for us for younger generations, which are not very used to drink Amarone. And we are also working a lot on the social side, trying to communicate more uh, with this kind of audience. <gasps> Tell us about this magnificent tree. <laughs> exactly. Us. I mean, the mulberry is a mulberry tree, and uh, in, in Italian, it's uh, gelso. Gelso. Yeah. It's beautiful, and it's a sort of guardian of the of the estate. Mm -hmm. uh, it was here before us, and kind of remind us that uh, there was a past, there was a tradition in this place that we want to preserve and to evolve, uh, in a sense, and that will be here long after us. So um, a wise uh, remind that um, we have to protect the territory we are in uh, to, to let them hit live for a long period of time. So yeah. I you, would say like that. You can convince our audience why they should come to visit Costa Rente. Go! Antonella. First of all, because it's a beautiful place, um, it, we are, it's very close to Verona, so it's also easy to, to join and to reach. Uh, the wines are mm, quite approachable and uh, nice wine to, to drink, very versatile. We have uh, a lot of future projects that we want to 
um, release on the market. So there will be always something new to tell about to Costa Rente. So I think that for all these reasons, it's worth the visit. She had me um, at, it's a beautiful place, <laughs> because I do agree, it's magnificent. With the mulberry tree as well. And that is a wrap with Antonella in Borgia from Costa Rente. Ciao ragazzi, don't forget to subscribe below and, and ping us whenever you get your pods, okay? Ciao, ciao. Chin chin, chin with chin. Italian wine people.